<laughs> you have the search bar, folks. You have all the time. But now, it's the world champs who's on match point. And they chose to be on the red side this time around, which gives Auris to prioritize their hero pick this time around. Okay. Um, looking at the bands, we there's a big shift in the picture of the draft. First time we're going to be seeing Sir, what's your command? Echo your on the red side. And it seems like they're just mirroring the priority bands uh, from when they were in the opposite sides here. Kaja still not uh, being given at all. RSG really do not want to give the Yuzhong. Uh, the Yuzhong going to the hands of Echo opens up or closes value in me. the possibility of a lineup with it, even of Arsa potentially uh, shining. With RSG banning out the Fredrin, it, this, this seems like a signal for either three things. If the Lancelot is open here, could be a Lancelot first pick, a Glue first pick, or a Valentina first pick. If the R-Lot is open, for sure the R-Lot will go in the hands of RSG. Yeah. That is a beast in all of the hero that he uses. And there's there could be no surprise if this is the first card that RSG is going to use. We have 39 seconds. And this is or what could be the prio pick of RSG here. Because right now, we are seeing similar bands. Glue is out of the option. Fred in as well for RSG. And this is a Lancelot! Ranmar, I see you stood up. What is this? What's this mean for RSG? It is exactly what they did in their crucial victory against Echo. Game number two, a Lancelot first pitch. If this forces Echo to go for pick up the Joy and the Arlot. Now, I'm not saying the difference is or actually RSG can mimic what they did back then and they can go ahead and pick up the Brody if they want to. If not the Brody they can go early carry but I'm sure Echo will have it red if RSG are just replicating what they did in the past. Uh, Valentina will be a fantastic option yet again. So if I'm RG, just either pick up the Valentina now and then pick up your Marksman as well, but you're already showing all your aces, but then that would mean the uh, picks for the Rome and the Escalade has to be really good. Okay. Yuzong is available. No, not available though. But this is Mincitar for RSG. Ooh. And Franco wow. with light. So no Marksman. Yeah. They're going with... Uh, Franco Mincitar combo, right? So now it's Echo that has to deal with the uh, basically their own dance, right? Dodging basically these yeah. uh, these hooks, these spears, um, and at the same time, I like yeah, I like what you mentioned, Redmar, how you know that first pick Lancelot really kind of changed the pace of this a little bit for that first phase, but more so for Echo. You know, this is very similar to what we've seen them do in the past. That having the Arlot, having the Joy, now the Akai. Part of their bases are pretty much covered for the most part, right? They need uh, really to lock down or hone in on this lineup because they know that they will be dealing with that pickoff-esque uh, kind of lineup here. Um, and at the same time, RSG this time, with Irad having that lance a lot, albeit be in the tanks a lot, right? You can still do quite a bit of work with that. And I feel like that's something that so far in these series where, you know, RSG has struggled a bit, is just relying too much on one aspect of damage. Yes. And so now you have it more, I would say, it, it, it's spread better. Of course, you need to see what they're going to throw in the mid lane, right? What magic damage they're going to deal with. Yeah. Um, but so far, I like what RSG is doing here to possibly take us to a game five. <laughs> they're all playmakers, man. It all makes sense because if they don't need to rely on just one. And to make all their magic and cards work, they need to activate everybody here that they can do. Again, this is a match point for Echo. They ban out the Kadita that could be a possible steal for RSG. And as well as the Valentina that you guys mentioned. So, more... Oh, Eve is still open and Farsa. Yeah, uh, up against a lineup with a Joy though, Eve looks like the better pick here for RSG. But I wouldn't be surprised if Echo goes ahead and picks that as pick four and then the Roamer will be their last pick. Uh, for the side of RSG... Uh, they might Come be... On, oh, I really thought they'd actually be drafting the Claude. That's why they... 
Ah, oh, interesting. Okay, so they really don't want to give the cloud instead. Hmm. Okay, so they don't want that annoying marksman who can be in and out. A lot of dive. I, I'd want to see a, with a dive. A br br Brody here. Maybe for Echo. Pick it up right now. Nope. Still going to be the Grok. And still, this is going to be a mid lane joy. A mid lane joy for yeah. Echo. Yep, certainly. So, Sanji on this one. So, what are the options here for the gold lane? So, we still have Melissa on the table. We still have the Brody for RSG. For Emon. Uh, it's a, a really tacky front here for Echo. A carry would look good. Oh. Uh, but they need a bit more peel. Their mid laner. I wonder what's it going to be. Oh, yeah. There's a whole group of them. Yeah, it's our MDL casters. Uh, inaugural best caster for the MDL. Uh, Bring it to there alongside Athena there you as go. well. Great call there, OSX. And, of course, the Eve. When the Eve open, they pick up the Eve. Wow. That's two. Good job, Francis. The Eve and the Melissa up against the Joy, as Renmar mentioned. But the carry here, here for Echo. Man, we're on. We're on the right track here and how they're going for it. Yeah, okay, so it's not a it's a Rome Grok, a jungle Akai, mid lane joy. That's the picture of the draft for these two. And this might be one of those games of whoever just presses better <laughs> wins. Yeah. It sounds better when I say it in Filipino. How, how does it go in Filipino? Uh Pagalinga ng Pindutan. Pagalinga and Pindutan. Yeah, oh, wow, you said that perfectly, dude. Yes, sir. Whoa. I'm, so, I'm proud oh, of you. You're a true Filipino. Filipino. I'm proud of you are you. Filipino. Let's go. And yeah, so, yes, it boils down to who presses the buttons better, who executes better, it seems like it. But the X factor for sure is the interaction between the Mincitar ultimate, the King's Calling, and the entry of Nats. Plus, here's a surprise here the heavy spin of Carl TZ being able to spread everyone out and potentially get out of a really shaky king's calling. This hero was Carl TZ's best bet for most of their matches today and he's not letting go. Oh, we have Sanford and Nats on camera. We have our XP lane matchup here and we're looking and we're trying to look for a, a possibility of how Nats would Used because we haven't seen Nas on this hero though. Yeah, yeah it's going to be his debut. And one of the difficult things about the lineup of Echo is their lack of long range spoke. This lineup of Echo is honest. They will get in your face, they will just try to be disruptive with the dives of Sanford and Sanji. But if RSG can leverage and position themselves well enough, Echo might not even be able to reach Emma during the big team fights. That's why you see here an early rotation topside by Sanji to disrupt and slow Emma as much as he can. As long as RSG and uh, help out Emma and Emma stays in a relatively safe distance, it's good use for RSG, bad use for Echo. Okay, so the pressure up top for Benny Cutie Light looking for information here at his on the crab point. Rather, so Sanji got on the first the Wanderer, and possibly now he's mostly busy on how he could rotate actually from top to bottom. So only tells with information on how Echo could really pressure RSG to early game. I mean, a little uh, early poking going on, but really nothing going to happen, you know, at least until I, I would say that first turtle does come up where we see both of these teams really see what they make out of their compositions, right? I mean, even Sanji on, on top of it is what we've seen from Joy so far, whether she's in the mid lane, whether she's parked in a side lane, hell, even if she's jungling. She's still a nuisance, right? And it came to a point where Joy in itself as a hero is really kind of hard to deal with for a lot of teams. And so now, are the tools there? Especially for RSG. The turtle is already going to be less than half health here. Naz already using the ultimate. Urad going to go in, but not going to find what he's looking for. Turtle secured. There's the bloody hunt. The follow-up. Sanford going to flicker around. Another flicker from Nas. Going to miss it, though. Sanji there to help him out. One hit away. Sanford. That no! is the hook. No! Sidesteps and survives. Turtle was secured by Echo. Off cam kill. They're up top. Benny Cutie. Oh, we're not done yet. Oh, look at Sanford. Yeah. Still going to be going. Once again, Nas will get that stun off, but survives both of them. Wins across the map there for Echo. Not the dream start here for RSG. Emman already dished one death. 
great help and assist there by Echo Benny Cutie, the solo kill. Of course, the response of Echo there in that turtle. Walk away with a kill and no other losses. Okay. Well, speaking of losses here, Aris needs to have a checklist on how to counter the control of Echo right now. Yaoi being busy with information as well as Sanji. The two players of Echo right now is so important to where to strike. Oh, look at that! Oh, yeah. Speaking of which, Wicker with a wild charge. Benny Cutie trying to get the kill there. They get away from me as popped. Heavy spin comes down. Not going to be enough. Emon, light fall. Echo finding two on the top side. Echo are getting the start they want. Benny Cutie might get punished here. Yeah, Benny Cutie did not know that they were waiting for him there. So will fall top side. RSG finally on the board. Still two versus two here. But they ultimately going to back off, get set up for that turtle in less than half a minute. That looked quite amusing to me. It's like uh, Carl Tizzi and Yahweh said, hey guys, we, hey, we can both go. Hey, we, we don't have damage. Let's just get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> just let them be. Uh, we have to commend RSG, uh, Exhort and Irat playing off the shrubs uh, to make sure that the other members of Echo don't see them uh, to uh, give them the position and the opportunity to pick off Benny Cutie like that. That was a great individual and well, duo sense by Exhort and Irat. That's how veteran C and experience works here for RSG. Taking control of the map, their macro sense and also their plays is really important for Echo. Now yes. Irad takes a poke out of this turtle, but now Carl TZ and Yaoi is looking for chances to not be in a retribution battle, but it seems like Irad and Light as well is here for the challenge. Not sure if they really want to do this. Irad going to jump in. Wow. He steals it under the nose of Carl TZ. Going to get out of there. Still Nass holding down the mid lane. RSG holding on. Really controlling that gold lead that Echo has. It is only a 1k at this point. Yeah, you see the retribution timers of both ticking. So that really went down to the microsecond of who got that retribution offers just in time. And it was Irad. Imagine being in the nose of Carl TZ, the one who uses the lance a lot. Yeah. Shows confidence, experience, and no matter how or who they're up against, it's on skill that they want to go in for such a showdown. Who secures it's Carl Teasy getting that crab coin. Yeah, bottom lane though, seems like that's uh, not having a good time going up against Sanford. Uh, with Sanford cutting his lane, he's going to be rotating mid first. He's trying to get info. So the, they know the orange buff is up there. They have the info that the Lancelot is down in the orange. See if Echo will try to make a play out of this, but they don't necessarily have the minion weight to do it. And because RSG have flooded bodies onto Emma's lane, Echo cannot commit a big play right now. Except Sanji's just trying to disrupt Irad. Yeah, not sure if he's going to actually escape this one. Already forced to use the Vengeance. So, you know, despite the idea there for Sanji, we'll get a resource out of here. But, you know, we have about 30 seconds for that turtle to be up last one of the game so far Exord also picking up a key item here to prep up for that fight yeah Irad really could have gotten Sanji there but Irad decided to play it really safe yep. he felt like he was getting baited into a trap member of Echo uh, could have jumped on him although in our point of view it looked like no way in hell anyone could have actually helped Sanji there even though Carl Tizzi was relatively close but Irad uh, to me in those situations, that is warranted uh, to play safe like that. Yeah, they, they need to be. Ha they need to compose themselves and have the discipline if they want to force this game into another breathtaking match. But now Yao is on the conceal though, and Exhort is trying to maintain that crystal. Oh, look at that light with the flicker! Flicker comes in. They find the lockdown of Carl Tizi trying to get him out. Here, Rat secures the turtle once again. Carl Tizi will fall. Yawi the next target. Irad on the hunt. He goes in. Wow. That's three. That fall. Double kill for Irad. Echo is in trouble. The tables have turned for RSG. Oh, the hell of a turnaround by RSG. The mechanic Sanford. Can he do something? Sanford still trying to hold on. Final slash and trying to buy time. Will dodge the iron hook. Has to flick around. Tier 1 mid lane going to be claimed by RSG. What a play there by the Raiders. That was just them pressing buttons better. <laughs> better execution, better timing. And you're, seeing, and you're starting to see and feel now the 
presence of the Kings calling in the right area, not necessarily just to drive the back line, but to close off the areas where the members of Echo can dash through, is coming in big here for RSG. It threw off the positioning and the team fight tempo of Sanford and Carl Tizi especially. And again, RSG going back to their key targeting. Find Carl, burst him down, then we go for the red three. Big hook, there's the bloody hunt. Yawi not gonna be able to escape from this one. Uses the wild charge, couple hits away. Emon will get the kill. And now their eyes set on that tier one in the bottom lane. Uh, Carl Tizi getting poked down here at an Sword here. Gonna be just fine though. As Echo trying to find their bearings in this game. Irat still on the hunt. There's the iron hook still looking for the follow up. That should be a kill. They get the heavy spin out though. So still a small win here for RSD, building on the momentum they have, plus the turret. Wow, three turrets being taken down by RSG up against Echo. This is just problems being stirred up to Echo right now, and all of the gold earnings is leaning towards Irad and Eman. Being in the damage, being in the distance, we're waiting for this Melissa to show up, but RSG, how they actually prepared themselves to go up against Echo, they're not putting down without a strong fight. This is one way of them seeing by not losing their grip in this game. Echo! Brazil play! Full on wild charge coming out from Yawi. It is going to be deterred for a little bit longer. Exhort dropping the real world manipulation. Sanford trying to buy time with the final slash. He gets Emon down before he falls himself. Irad with the mega kill as he takes on Sanford. Now it's a four versus four. Oh. The hook's going to land from light. But it's Yawi that they find. Do they have the damage? Four versus four for the Lord. Both junglers going to go ahead and start up the dance here. King's okay. Calling, man. Looked really good there for Echo, but again, the King's Calling, the ultimate of the mid star, throwing off Echo's team fighting. Still going to be fighting for it here. Looks like they're going to give it a go. Irad getting in position to steal it as he's done before. Exort, though, will get whittled down by Sanji. Irad does it again against Carl Teasy. Takes out Yawi on top of it. Benny Cutie going to be in trouble. Has to flicker out. Will survive. Light's going to hook the minion and will get taken down by Sanford. There's the bloody hunt, trying to buy a couple more seconds before he falls. E, 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 the lo Irad. He is looking like an absolute star right now. Look oh, at him he's bobbing, he's oh, leaving. He's heck. He goes oh, in. Can he survive oh. this and get away? No, he can't. Sanford will take him down. But Irad. Wow, his confidence is off the roof and up against the GOAT, Carl Tizi. He managed to take him down under the turret and RSG is now still leading with the push. Oh, Yabi once again. Emon happened to use the ultimate here. They got to deal with the Lord still. Echo in a good position to at least defend this one. Nats goes in, there's the final slash. They can cut him off from the rest of the team. Nats will go down to the base of Echo as they hold on from that Lord push. Sanji, though, going to be hunted down. Can they chase him down? Can his team get to him in time here? Sanji's still on the run, and they know Ooh. we can't catch this joy. And that's a good pull by time as well by Sanji. He's been doing it. He's been doing it so good for Echo that everything's being divided for RSG. Oh, we found light. Echo gets... Oh. Oh, oh, the wild charge. Oh no. It looked like Grok was way too thick. <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah. He's like, all right, that wall's a little longer or I'm a little too thick. Yeah. <laughs> Here comes Irad. Purple buff still secured by Carl Tizi. That wild charge landed. If uh, Grok was able to get through it, could have been a pick off onto light, but Arshi was close enough to answer. So we can't say for sure that would have been a sure secure there for Echo or a big win for Echo. But despite all that, despite Arshi being in the lead, it is still a very close game. Item-wise, you see here the signature of Iran. What he does is he builds that war axe early on. It's a hybrid, and instead of it being uh, late game build damage items for Lancelot, it's you build it as one of your first. Then you go Guardian, Bloodlust, a Bloodlust axe, and potentially it looks like he's building one more damage item, which, if I'm not mistaken, could be a Malefic Roar. Well, now that's physical damage penetration being present. Now with that kind of damage now, they need to be prepared on how the defense would look like. But man, just how, I just wonder how Irad 
does this, everything with such full confidence and experience. He's just so, well, not being not being disturbed on how he's up against the world champs. Yeah, he is styling and profiling right now in his debut playoffs. Debut playoffs. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a lot of people, you got to be honest, a lot of people kind of doubted him when he first showed up, yeah. you know, and, and really questioned the decision, even, uh, you know, put him in. But, hey, the guy is doing an amazing job, and he's styling, like you guys mentioned, and he's 6-1, and one, just picked up the BOD. Yeah. Position to do exactly what he's been doing against these objectives. So Echo's got to have an answer here. Yeah, we could go in with a wild charge. Whoa. They look for Emon, can't find him just yet. Sanford in a bad position. Light did fall, but now Sanford to follow. Still going to be going. Benny Cutie unleashing. Benny. The spin wheels are too much. Three have fallen for RSG. A TK for the storm and a Lord for Echo on the back of Carl Teasy just saying, all right, y'all guys fight there. I'm going to get this Lord. Zone out for days. The storm is activated. Triple Benny. Can, what can they get out of this Lord push though as the members of Echo are spawning in? Seems like the Lord has free reign up top. Echo will have eyes set on breaking down the outer turrets of RSG. So that's how he managed to sustain himself by just himself alone. Yeah. Physical damage to the wind of nature was present and both of the two important members of Echo were on to a big objective and were on to taking the most important people in RSG and they've broken down another turret and they're pushing in from top to mid and Echo is this the strength that they're missing from the early game and it's just purely showing up against RSG. Yeah. You have to appreciate the call there by Echo. They got to knock up Emma and they couldn't take Emma down but Sanji said, okay, it's my job to just stop him from getting to the fight and without Emma there, RSG struggled in that fight especially to take down Benny oh. Cutie but kudos. To RSG for taking down three crucial members of Echo in that scenario. And they just couldn't take down Benny. How do you catch Benny? It's all up to light here. It's all up, up to his iron hook and that bloody hunt. But that's a good seal. Yeah, yeah, we're going to go again. Ooh, Using the flick of the wild step. charge. Not going to find a target. The side steps were there from RSG. They lose that tier two. But might be looking for a counter punch here. Light gonna be looking for the hunt. He Light. goes in with a bloody hunt. Finds Sanford. But was that the right target? Look at the oh. final slash comes through. And the follow up. Benny Kitty is still unleashing to the backside. Naz is there. Sanji goes in, cuts him off. Naz will fall here. Double for Sanji. And it looked like a counter punch from RSG, but it ended up biting them in the back. As now the inhibitor turns can be worked on here. Erad trying to buy some time. But they hold on, they get the flicker out to avoid the hook. Wow. Sanford, the final slash to set it up. And also great news for Echo, that there were enough members close by to respond to that. That was the right call by Light, the right call by RSG, but that was the right turnaround by Echo. Going back on that instant replay, that wall, and how Benny Cutie managed to have his free hits in the area of RSG, it's just Nats being left alone by the Raiders, it just, that's purely in a great timing, but it was, wasn't enough for them to defend as well. Echo on the lead, 2.3K. You know, that is, even the positioning there from the previous fight, with Sanji, you know, able to cut off, cut off the rest of RSG from the backside, that's something you always have to worry about when it's dealing the, with a joint. It's the X factor of this XP laners, RSG and Echo. Amazing micro plays. Look at the rest of the team. Echo isn't even here for this fight. There, we've seen them do this before. Going to be setting up there patiently while Carl Tizi and Sanford around the Lord Pit. RSG trying to get sense of exactly oh, where the rest of the where are, are they? Yawi going forward from the back side. They're going to find Exhort in a massive play. Can they turn it around here? Emon will get Sanji down. Emon, Does he have Emon. enough damage? Benny Cutie, immortality will be popped. Still going to be looking for the kill and they oh. get the shutdown. Oh. Double for Emon. Still going to be unleashing Sanji. Sanford trying to take him down oh. and he does it. Gets rid of Emon and now Echo. What do they want to do? Do they want to start the Lord or retreat? He's on a pursuit. Will he chase down? 
Irad going for it, trying to get him down. There's the hook. They find him. Still has the opportunity to work oh, through here. Irad. Irad quite low, but buys some time. <laughs> Amazing plays. What a showcase. Amazing plays right there. Echo and RSG on a tight match there. Losing two members, Exort falls down, and RSG still maintain their defense and poise up against Echo. Still very even. What a showcase by the Kings of C and the world champions in this game number four. Lord down to 50%. Echo knows where Irad is. The rest of RSG still on the way. Still going to be working for it. Irad looking to do it again. Wild Charge going to miss. Does he grab it? It's no. Carl TZ securing the Lord here. RSG has to retreat. They know what's in store for them. Look at all the immortalities for Echo. The Raiders, they're going to have to have a miracle defense against this push almost 19 minutes into the game. Bah, you can hear it. He's a panda, but I'm hearing goat bleats. <laughs> what a play there by Echo. Great targeting. That scenario, though, you have to go all the way back to the efforts of Emma to stay alive and free hit. Why RSG even got to they got oh, yeah. themselves into a position where Irad can contest that Lord. Yeah. And it was close. Irad was there. He could have gotten it. But at the end of it all, it was Carl Teasy who gets that Lord. He it's lost. It's the last one, though. He might lost the early objectives, but not now. It's Carl Teasy still winning the retribution battle. And now it's a base defense for RSG. Oh, let's see if they can do it. Still, Lord here going to be have to whittle down. They've got the minions mostly taken care of. And right now, Echo knows they don't have an entry point. Sanford also doesn't have the final slash available. But leave it up to Yowie, he might look for an opening here. Waves pushing in, it looks like Echo is just going to call it off. Now it'll be up to the, the defense and those concealed plays to get out of base and find a pickoff. And then fight around that. A very close hook on the Carl Tizzi would have been bad for Echo. RSG, what opening can they find is the biggest question. Okay. To answer that I, question. Oh, Light's going to get trapped under the Guardian's barrier. Can he get out? Has the immortality. Echo didn't want to commit anything to Light there. They know they've got to play this carefully. They are at match point here. And it looks like they're just trying to take control this side of the map. Yeah. To answer your question, Ranmar, possibly isolate one from Echo and wait for them to commit mistakes. Oh, almost a pixel. Light on those iron hooks is just totally on point. But if they had a chance to divide Echo right now and commit those mistakes yeah. and over commitment of those ultimates, that's one way to have a chance against the world champs. Divide and conquer the Orcas. Emma picked up a rose gold meteor, a little bit of light steel, magic defense, and of course the shield that you get out of that will come in big. May come in big for the gold later for RSG, considering that it's been Sanji over and over again who's been diving him, looking for him. Now you see the marksman juggling items around earlier. Many didn't Many Cutie didn't have this, but now he has the Haas Claws. Now Echo are going for one of their signature plays for a Lord. They position themselves as three in this area, and they will go for a sandwich play once the Lord is almost down. Okay. Let's see if RSG knows the situation. They're going to be looking for the backliners of RSG. Is that three-man kill squad of Echo? You see, that's why RSG are staying back right now. Here comes Conceal. There it goes, Conceal. RSG's seen this a time or two. They're not going to fall for it just yet. Sanji still trying to do work as well. Lord now half health here. Oh. Carl Teasy knows he's got to watch out for Irad. This as game. They go ahead and dance on. Oh, this game just makes my heart pump too fast. Amazing ways of these two kings to battle it out. It's just so amazing to witness, but Irad is trying to look for an avenue here. Sanji on the back line. Here comes Sanji, right for Emon, gets the ultimate out. Oh. They know he goes in. Yaoi with a wild charge. Do they have the follow up? Emon's unleashing. 
Do they have enough? Sanji still going to be alive. That's the immortality. Light goes in, Benny. pushing Sanji Benny. back. Benny, oh. the will fall. Emma oh. down as well. Gold for gold. Exhort the next target. And now RSG Sanji. still on the hunt. There's the winter oh. truncheon, and Sanji will fall. Now light, quite low. Echo looking to control the fight, still going. Here at Immortality will be popped, and it looks like Echo. <laughs> Still on the hunt, Irat's gonna have to have some fancy footwork, but does he have it? He goes, he bobs, he weaves, and he survives for now. Irat's there as well to help him out. Irat is showcasing one of the greatest Lancelot performances of all time. Amazing. He evaded the wrath of Echo right into that scenario. Yeah, so tanky. Able to hold off Yawi and Sanford. Meanwhile, buying enough time for Irad to clear the wow. lane and come back to contest the wow. Lord. Is he Can doing he it? Take it. There's Is the lockdown. Does oh! he have the retribution? Oh! It's the ass that comes out on top. And Irad on the run oh, once God. again. Can't be chased out. RSG does it. Naps, <laughs> really, Naps. Both junglers utilizing their retry. Irad, the decision to run to the Lord because he felt that something was off. Where was Carl? I'm sure he's getting the Lord, says Irad, and that put RSG in the in the position to contest. And now Echo have their backs against the wall. Just when they thought they had it, the Raiders raid the hope back from them. No one is still safe. No one is damn still safe. This is just purely experience. Amazing place, beautiful MLB be showing up on your screens here. The Battle of Kings, and now the base defense is now on the Echo side. Echo. Feeling how the tables have turned here. Gonna have to work for this Lord. Taking it down. Gonna lose the next inhibitor turret in the mid lane. There's the hook. Carl Teasy getting the spear, actually. And now we are at making work on the last one. And now it's a similar situation for both teams. Bases fully exposed. Concealed play gonna be used from Yowie. Not sure if he wants to go in on this. RSG is ready. Carl T's going to go in with the heavy spin. Benny Cutie trying to leash. And the final it's slash comes through it's as well. Far. There's too much. Emmon still alive here. Sanji on the hunt. Can he get him the wind of nature? The hook from light. Able to keep him alive. And Echo's in trouble. As RSG is all alive and two members of Echo are down. Still on the hunt. The spear will not land. And RSG waits for minions to possibly push it in for a game five. <laughs> On a game. TikTok timers in. Echo, can they afford with that moment to wait? There's three members present. Yaoi still holding the line. Oh, Yaoi trying to buy some time. Benny going to get cut off. He's in trouble. There's the lockdown. Light going to find him, and that's oh. going to be it. As Emon takes out Benny Cutie, Carl TZ to follow. Will Heavy spin out of the way, but the minions are here. The full force of the Raiders as well. And we go to our first game five of the playoffs. In the battle of champions. In the battle of being able to showcase what makes you great, add to your legacies, the Raiders say no, we will not fall now, history will not be repeated, we will not be 3-1 in the upper bracket by Echo, we will force game number five.